Well, this was a surprise. I was expecting the vast majority of you to vote for a text-only newsletter, uh, and a handful of folks to vote for rich media formats like audio and video. Instead, well, this happened. While a text newsletter is your preferred format still, the other two formats weren't as far behind as I expected. So what happens next? Well, obviously if you're watching this, uh, we're going to give this a try. Here's the trick with results like this. These results are statistically significant. There is a clear winner, a clear choice that you've made. Uh, now, if I, we were naive marketers, we declare text newsletters the winning format and carry on no changes, right? But we're not. We're, we're experienced marketers. And when we see results like this, you have to stop and think. More than a third of you said that text uh, was your preferred choice as a format, but almost a third of you said audio was, and just under a third said video. Which means that if I produced a newsletter only in text format, I'd be disappointing two-thirds of you. So, we're going to give this a try and see what you think. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a really important lesson in here, especially if you're doing lots of testing. This is effectively an A-B test of sorts. No, it's, it's an A-B-C test, I suppose, since the poll had three choices. Uh, what would happen if I declared A the winner and ignored B and C? That's what we do a lot with A-B tests, right? We, we choose the winner. I'd be focusing on making a minority of you happy at the expense of the majority. Is that sound? Is that logical? No, of course not. No one would ever advise you to ignore, you know, 62% of your customers. But if I only picked A and I ignored B and C, I'd be doing exactly that. And yet we, and more importantly, our marketing automation software, does that every single day, don't we? Every time we set up a website optimization test or an email test or a social media test or an ad test, and we get like a 55-45 split or a 60-40 split or even a 70-30 split and we declare a winner, we are automatically saying the preferences of the minority don't matter, even when that minority is a sizable portion of our audience. What if there were more buyers in B than A? Right? What if the people who chose A were terrible customers and the people who chose B were great customers? Do we know that? Can we prove that? Or are we just lopping off the preferences and interests of a minority of our audience when those interests and that their minority of choices might be very significant? The only time I would feel comfortable about declaring winners and ignoring the preferences of the non-winners is if there's an overwhelming majority, like 95-5 or 99-1. And even then, I might want to dig into who is in that 5% to see what, if anything, makes them behave so differently. So in the meantime, we're going to try this experiment. For the next few issues, I'm going to see what it will take to make at least some of it available by video and audio. Because, you know, obviously making video implicitly means making audio. And see how you react to it. If the videos and audio downloads uh, don't get any views or listens, then we'll just stick with text. But on the other hand, if... You, know, you put 5,000 views on, on my YouTube channel for this. I'll know we should keep doing this together. Either way, we'll use the data to uh, drive the decision-making process because that's what data-driven means. We, data drives the decisions. So the takeaway here is in your own A-B testing, in your own optimization, uh, make sure that you're not just picking winners and losers, but you're trying to understand both segments or as many segments of the audience as you have and what makes them behave differently and are those behaviors relevant to the type of customer they are the probability that they will buy because you may be surprised by what you find i hope you see how this process should inform your data-driven marketing as well now what's in the rest of the newsletter uh, we've got stuff uh, from the blog. Uh, if I had to pick one thing for you to take a look at from the blog this week, it's the mind readings piece on the language of our goals, how we talk about our goals, and kind of the way we sabotage ourselves, plus a bunch of other uh, things. We've got some classes on the fundamentals of marketing analytics and how to think about Google Analytics 4. You'll see that in this, the classes section. 
We've got some new jobs, marketing assistant at Heart and Highland, uh, senior product marketing manager at PTC. So if you're uh, on the prowl for a new uh, position or changing things up, go to the uh, get back to work section. Also, uh, all the jobs, I'm, I'm only putting the top five in the newsletter. So if you want to see all the listings, go to the analytics for marketers Slack community, and you'll be able to, uh, to see them all there. Go to trustinsights.ai slash analytics for marketers. And then the usual roundup of news. We've got stuff about TikTok Creator Fund, dynamic content, email marketing, SEO best practices, and AI to automate SEO. We've got uh, the role of AI in transforming video, uh, reclaiming keyword data in Google Analytics, uh, um, stuff from our friends at IBM on uh, a good earnings quarter, and upcoming events, things like the Marketing Profits B2B Forum and stuff. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video and or audio version of the newsletter. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.